All right, guys, getting right into it. So, you go on scene and your patient has a really fast heart rate. You do your 12 lead and you look and you see this weird slurring upstroke right before your R rave. Well, what is it and what do you do? Well, the purpose of this is to kind of talk about at a paramedic level, one of the conditions that we're going to see is Wolf Parkinson's white. Um, Wolf Parkinson's white is, in my experience, pretty rare to run on in EMS in the pre-hospital setting. I've, I've been on the road for about 13 years, and I've been flying for about five, and I've only seen a couple instances where somebody had this tachyarrhythmia, and I've noticed it as Wolf Parkinson's white, and in almost all the cases, the patient actually knew they had it. All right, so what is it? When we talk about WPW, there's a lot of mysticism about this rhythm in paramedic school and among paramedics. So we're going to talk about it a little bit. We're not going to get too in-depth into all the different kinds of AV nodal re-entry tachycardias. And we'll talk about that just a little bit. But the main point of this is to recognize somebody with WPW and how to treat it if we need to. All right. Well... I'm going to start here by drawing my little heart, all right, a little circle heart. I got my SA node and I got my AV node. <clears throat> well, normally, the electrical conduction pathway will travel down these little branches to my atrium here and fire down. <clears throat> this is the normal electrical pathway. It is from my SA node down to my AV node. Now, in Wolf Parkinson's White, there's an extra little circuit. It can be either right there or over here. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> All right, but it's a little circuit connecting the atrium for the ventricles. This is the wrong circuit. This is the bad circuit. And if we're talking about WPW, then this is a little extra electrical circuit called the bundle of Kent. All right, or you can simply call it the Kent fibers. These are Kent fibers or bundle of Kent or the Kent bundle, however. Uh, whatever textbook you're reading at the time, we'll call it differently. And these, this electrical circuit here has, a, has different properties than our normal electrical circuit that goes down to our ventricles, to our Purkinje fibers. These are our bundle branches. Now, normally when the SA node delivers <clears throat> an electrical discharge, it's going to depolarize the atrium and travel down this electrical circuit, repolarize and do it all over again. But in the case of a Wolf Parkinson's white, the electricity is going to travel down and it's going to depolarize the ventricles via the normal electrical circuit, but it's also going to depolarize the ventricles via the bundle of Kent. Now, the AV node has the special property of the gatekeeper, you know, quote unquote, the gatekeeper. It holds the electricity, allows the ventricles to fill <clears throat> for fractions of a second. Well, the bundle of Kent here, these fibers don't have that. The electricity is going to flow through those Kent fibers um, without any type of slowing down. Now, you know, normally this isn't going to cause too much of a problem, but our patient's ECG will show this classic slurred upstroke right there. And I'll draw it. You know, a little P wave, you have a slant, and then your QRS complex. All right, this slanting upward right there, that's called your delta wave. That's a delta wave, all right? That is diagnostic of Wolf Parkinson's white. So you have a short PRI, short PRI, and a delta wave. Your patient has Wolf Parkinson's white. And now, I mean, they live with this on a day to day basis. <clears throat> But if they were to develop a tachyarrhythmia is when it could start getting bad. And we all know tachyarrhythmia is the heart can't fill. Um, preload starts going down. Cardiac output drops. Your patient become um, yes, uh, syncopal. They can become weak, nausea, vomiting. And they can actually throw them into V-fib if it gets too bad. So that's when we have to step in and kind of treat it. Now it becomes an AV nodal reentrant tachycardia. All right, that's that AVNRT that you're going to hear. When the electricity travels down here and it travels down 
your AV node, depolarizing the ventricles, but it's going to retrograde back up through this fiber, and it's going to go back to your AV node. Depolarize the ventricles back up through my, my extra fiber here, this Kent fiber, and it's going to go around and around and around. Depolarizing atrium, depolarizing ventricles, atrium ventricles, atrium ventricles. This is going to cause a very tachyarrhythmia. Right? And this is how people with Wolf Parkinson's white get into their, their uh, you know, maybe life threatening tachyarrhythmias because of this re entry circuit. That's why it's called re entry, because it's going to the ventricles, back up through this fiber, depolarizing the atrium, and on and on and on and on, almost like a dog chasing his tail. Okay? That is when we have to treat our patients. Now, if it is a true AV nodal reentry tachycardia, adenosine will work just fine. You can give adenosine. It's not contraindicated. Um, you don't want to give diltiazem, especially if your patient is in an AFib or an A-flutter with AV nodal reentry tachycardia or with Wolf-Parkinson's-White. And ricardism works in a different way. It's going to... Um, cause a prolongation of phase three action potential in the atrium. And if you do that, then <coughs> your patient is going to rely solely on this um, extra circuit here and you can actually make their tachycardia worse. All right. So you can give adenosine for our SVTs. All right. That's how we, we treat them. We give adenosine for our SVTs, but we don't, we just want to make sure that we have our equipment ready in case the adenosine does stuff, something bad, we want to have our Life Pack 12 or a Life Pack 15 or a Zoll or whatever ready that you can hook up and uh, defibrillate our patient if needed. Now, if they are if they're too far gone and and you don't think the adenosine is going to work, then of course we're going to go jump straight to cardioversion. Okay. Now, if you're not sure whether or not it's Wolf Parkinson's white or not. There's other types of AV nodal reentry tachycardia. We're just going to go over one of them, okay? And I'm going to blow up this AV node so it looks a little bigger than normal. But normally there's the electrical circuit that goes into the AV node that depolarizes this AV node. But the patient can sometimes develop a second wire, an accessory wire. And listen to all these terms. We have AV nodal reentry tachycardia that we just talked about, all right? Wolf Parkinson's white is considered a re-entry tachycardia. Re-entry tachycardia. Because the electrical stimulus re-enters the pathway via that, that bundle of Kent. I mean, there's other types of um, re-entry tachycardias. I mean, another one is LGL for, for Lone Gaeong Levine. And I apologize if I just completely brutalized that that word there, but LGL, <clears throat> and that's due to James's bundle, which is another type of um, electric, extra electrical circuit, but instead of the bundle of Kent, you have the James bundle, but so there's a whole bunch of different kinds of, of uh, AV nodal tachycardias that we worry about. In this one, you have the electrical stimulus going down this normal wire, which depolarizes and repolarizes normally. This extra wire, this abnormal wire here, it depolarizes normally, but it repolarizes very quickly, very quickly, faster than this one. So when the electrical stimulus comes from the atrium and on down, it's going to depolarize this AV node, but because of the refractory period, everything's fine, and your patient is not going to have any changes on, these, on the EKG. The problem uh, arises when the patient throws a PAC or a premature atrial contraction. Remember, it's premature. And that's the problem with a lot of these rhythms. They call them re-entry tachycardia, AV nodal re-entry tachycardia, or pre-excitation syndrome. That's another name that you call Wolf well, Parkinson's White, is pre-excitation syndrome for that reason. So I have an electrical stimulus that travels down due to this PAC. It's happening before uh, normal uh, repolariz uh, uh, repolarization would get done. And because of that, this is traveling down and it depolarizes this a lot quicker because it repolarizes very quickly. So it's going to depolarize the AV node again. And it's going to repolarize and cause this again re-entry circuit. 
around and around and around and around, causing a life-threatening tachycardia. Now here's some food for thought. If you have a junctional rhythm that's greater than 140 beats per minute, you can almost bet the farm that is an AV nodal reentry tachycardia. Nothing else. Because remember, if we are monitoring lead two, my negative electrodes up here and my positive electrodes down here. And if this reentry circuit is causing the atrium to depolarize upward towards this negative electrode, I'm going to have, you know, no P waves, or I'm going to have inverted P waves, or I'm going to have retrograde inverted P waves. That's a junctional rhythm. So if I have these P waves that are going in opposite direction, or no P waves with a fast heart rate, you can almost bet the farm that this is an AV nodal reentry tachycardia due to the junction, all right, due to something down there. But going back to Wolf Parkinson's White, if you see that, and you see this reentry, uh, this pre-excitation syndrome by this delta wave, then you want to just be very cautious when giving your patient anything that causes AV nodal blockage. Adenosine is one of them. Now, adenosine is the first line drug in treatment for uh, uh, Wolf Parkinson's White. If you're scared or whatever your protocol says, you can go to cardio version of the tachycardic, or you can give them a trial of amiodarone. I know a lot of uh, departments don't carry percanamide, but you know they get percanamide in the hospital for these types of patients. But give your adenosine if you see this delta wave. If they're in an A fib or an A flutter with Wolf Parkinson's White, stay away from your calcium channel blockers. All right, it'll be nothing but badness. You don't want badness on your patients. All right, that's Wolf Parkinson's White. If you have any questions, email me or go to my blog, clinicalparamedic.wordpress.com. See ya.